This is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2, and I really want to love this laptop. Like, there's so many good things about this product that just, I don't know, Microsoft does so well compared to other laptop manufacturers out there, but the only thing that's holding me back from recommending it is the performance and the price. And look, like, <sighs> mm, there's just so many good things going for it. And even this year, they upgraded the processor specs to be in line with this year's CPUs. It's using the latest Intel 13th gen CPU. It has an NVIDIA RTX 4060, even though it's running at 80 watts, and it has a fairly fast NVMe SSD. But it costs $32.99 for this specific SKU, and that's really expensive. And when you compare it to a Comparable MacBook Pro 14, it's only $200 off. And depending on what type of your work you're doing, the MacBook Pro might be the better deal for you. Now look, not a lot has changed. It's pretty much the same looking Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. And you have that kind of weird design where it looks like there's a laptop on top of a stand because they've placed all these grills on the bottom over here for air to flow out. It's funny, I had this right beside my MacBook Pro to do like similar tests and the air was just like spewing out of the sides and my MacBook Pro started to get hot because of it, especially when I was doing really intensive things. But the port situation is very identical to before. For example, you have your USB A3.1 port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, you have your Surface Connect port, your combo audio jack, and a micro SD card. The unfortunate part about this laptop is you really can't get into it. And even if you do, there's really not much you can upgrade. Everything is soldered onto the motherboard, except for the NVMe SSD. But it's, you know, a good size. It's a little heavy for a 14 inch laptop. Like it's 4.37 pounds compared to a MacBook Pro 14, which is under four pounds. But I feel like it's still very light to travel with. It's a great product if you need to draw and sketch because you have the option of taking the display open like this, using it as a normal laptop, but then you can like pop it forward and then put it in different positions. So if you want something just to like watch content, you can do that. Or if you wanna like put it into a complete tablet position, you have the option to do that too. I think for this price, they should have included the pen in the box because that costs an extra $129. And on a $3,300 product, it starts to really add up. But if you're someone who needs to do both work and draw, like this is gonna do it for you with a lot of GPU power to go behind it. Now look, I love this keyboard. This keyboard is absolutely awesome. Microsoft makes a fantastic keyboard. Not only is it a joy to type on, it just feels good to use. No stickers on the laptop, so it doesn't look tacky. The touchpad is definitely a little bit on the smaller side when you compare it to a MacBook Pro, but I love the fact that they're using haptic touchpads. It's so much better than a glass touchpad, okay? Like it's just an, on another level. That's why the MacBook Pro, or MacBook Air rather, always has the gold standard, is because they also use haptic touchpads. Like once you use a haptic touchpad and it's implemented properly, you can't go back to anything else, and Microsoft is doing that. Now this does have quad speakers, they're kind of coming out of the keyboard deck, and they do sound great. They sound really good for a laptop that doesn't really have speaker grills on it, but obviously it doesn't sound as loud as a MacBook Pro 14, or even a MacBook Pro 16. The display is 14.4 inches, it's using Microsoft's Pixel Sense technology, it is an LCD panel, it's not OLED or mini LED. It's a great IPS panel, like it does have good color gamut, doesn't have 100% P3, but it's close enough. And I feel like if you're doing any sort of design work on this, you can totally trust this panel. It has a bright display, just under 500 nits of brightness, which is definitely above average for most laptops these days. And you know, it does support touch, obviously, because you do have pen input. And you know, it's 120 Hertz. So like if you're using this display to like scroll or game, it's gonna feel a lot more fluid, obviously. If you want this on battery, I would probably drop it down to 60 hertz or leave it on dynamic mode. That will switch back and forth between 60 or 120, depending if it's plugged in or not. The webcam at the top not only supports Windows Hello to quickly log you in, but you also get a 1080p webcam. And because Microsoft is using a special AI chip on this laptop, you have all those Windows Studio effects available to you. So you can do things like auto framing or blur the background so that you have a more presentable version of yourself when you're doing a Zoom call. So right now you're looking at the camera from the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio and you're obviously listening to the microphone. The lighting in here is pretty mediocre. It's just using the typical tungsten lights 
that I have in the studio. 1080p, you guys let me know how it looks and obviously let me know how it sounds. Now it's great they're using the latest 13th gen processor. Usually they're a year behind with their previous Surface laptop when they came out with that version. But look, it's still not running as fast as other comparable 13700H CPUs. And the same holds true for the NVIDIA RTX 4060. Look, I've compared this to a lot of laptops. It performs well for a laptop this size, but I feel like Microsoft is kind of limited because of their CPU options. They're trying to present you, the user, a gorgeous design, a thinner design, and they wanna make sure the fan noise is nice and low. And when you do that, they had to sacrifice some of that performance in order to give you that experience. They're not using ARM chips like Apple, so they don't have that opportunity to give you more in a smaller chassis. So they're kind of limited due to the CPU choices that they have available to them. Now, obviously, AMD would have been a better choice, but the problem with AMD is they have an issue of having enough supply, whereas Intel always has plenty to sell. But look, you know, single core performance is pretty close to where it should be. Same holds true with multi-core performance. If you're buying this for, let's say, Photoshop, it performs very well. Not as well as other 13th gen laptops with similar CPUs, but well enough. But the one area where it kind of gets nerfed is GPU performance. The GPU in here, the 4060, doesn't perform on level with other 4060. I understand it's 80 watts, but they are holding it back in order to give you a quieter experience. And it kind of runs more like a 4050 Ti, kind of in the middle between a 4050 and a 4060, if that was a thing. But you're not getting a full hardcore 4060 like you would in other gaming laptops. But that's the thing, you can play games on this, which is great, as long as you don't mind dropping the settings down. Like this is a 2400 by 1600 resolution display, three by two aspect ratio, giving you more of that vertical space. But in a lot of the games you play, you're gonna have to drop it down quite significantly if you want really good frame rates. It's just having a tough time with that 4060 with that type of resolution. Thermals on this are quite fantastic. Under full load, it sits in the mid 70s, which is a great place to be. But unfortunately, it also means they're leaving a bit of performance off the table. I did find that the multi-core average speeds were quite low compared to other 13700H laptops that are on the market. But here's the thing, like I still love this. There's so much greatness about this laptop. The design, the way it feels, the battery life, the keyboard, the touchpad, the webcam, the display, everything. But at the end of the day, I always have a tough time recommending it because for that price point, $3,300, you can buy a MacBook Pro 14, get a better experience, better battery life, better display, more performance, if you're using it for strictly productivity without some of the sacrifices that Microsoft had to make with this laptop. But look, I think Microsoft is getting there. I think all the other OEMs out there could learn a few tricks from this product because it's one of the best feeling and looking laptops from Windows that are currently on the market. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.